Well, we made it through Feast Week. I don't know how, but we made it. And, I mean, Omar Balo went off for Arizona. They win Maui, you know, against Creighton, who had to go up against Arkansas and Texas Tech. Um, Arizona had to get through uh, San Diego State and I think Cincinnati. Um, if you watch Creighton, Arkansas, that was a war, man. That was crazy. Crazy game in that one, you know. Like, I don't think I... I think I should have expected this because, again, you know, it's Tommy Lloyd and the and them boys out in Arizona. So, you know, it's going to be it's gonna, it's gonna be a real good one, you know, let me tell you. Then there's also Tennessee. Again, that same Tennessee team that got beat by Colorado. Whooped up both Kansas in the battle for Atlanta's title game. And I'm very surprised at Oklahoma. Again, veteran group. For them, they turned it around. They win the ESPN Events Invitational. But let's talk about the PK-85. That's, that's really the important stuff right here. Because, I mean, that those two tournaments right there, insanity. Pure insanity. Because you have, you know, Zach Eddy out-dueling Drew Timmy. You know, Purdue, not only did they beat the Zags, they just... They just absolutely destroyed Duke. Fletcher Lawyer, he is now a spoiler maker too. And Purdue, write them up. This, this team looks like they are something again. In a crazy college basketball season already. You know, I think we got a lot of contenders. It's not just the same old few. We got a lot of contenders, you know, that could ball, you know. You know, they say 20 to 25 teams can, you know, outright win the title. But this year, it's definitely looking a little bit crazier. I think there may be like 30. And Purdue is definitely one of those 30. I mean, my goodness. They, they smoked Duke. Like, this wasn't even close in the PK Legacy title. Like, Duke had to outlast Oregon State and Xavier to get here. Xavier and the Zags, on the other hand, they just had a three-point shooting war that, you know, was insane. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and give Purdue their marks. And then you gotta, you gotta hand it to the Cyclones. Caleb Grill, Jaron Holmes, Iowa State, they not only beat Villanova, they stunned North Carolina, who just has not been, you know, looking like the number one team. They haven't looked like team that they said they were going to be this year. You know, Villanova's just down this year, which is really weird. But I mean, Iowa State, you know, Oldsburger has the Cyclones ready. Again, you know the Big 12 is already the toughest conference in the country. It has been for several years now. And I mean, let me tell you, It, 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 or, or is anybody even surprised the brand of basketball the Big 12 plays is just it's just that good that good and then you had UConn you know Adama Snogo he's not the only guy that was dominating because in the PK um, in the PK Invitational title you know like this UConn team was built different you know, Oregon, they beat them. Alabama, they beat them. And Alabama stunned, you know, North Carolina in like several overtimes. So, yet again, again, North Carolina, weird results for them. And then UConn to win the PK Invitational Championship. Like, the game was close. I was watching the game, and it was close early. But then, you know, UConn with, you know, the rest of the team, again, it's not just Sonogo that's dominating. It was the whole team out there just bullying Iowa State. And that's what happened in this game. You know, that's really how it all went down. So, you know, Feast Week is over. I'm a little sad that it is. I'm, I'm going to be watching a lot of highlights because, again, I missed a lot of these games, you know, uh, for, you know, especially Friday, you know, Friday going into Sunday, you know, because of, um, of football but you know I missed a lot of these games so 
Um, this week, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more focused. Thank goodness. Thankfully, we have a little bit more focus this week. Um, one of the main focuses is, is it going to be really the final ACC Big Ten Challenge? That's that's one thing that's you know going to be on our minds. You know, Virginia, Michigan, North Carolina, Indiana are the two games that I'm thinking are going to be the most important. You know, I don't really care about the actual challenge itself. Uh, most important thing here are these two matchups to me because Tar Heels, they just got humiliated twice. You know, they were thrilling losses, but they got humiliated because, again, a lot of people had North Carolina pegged as this team that was on a destiny quest, and they're not looking like it so far. And then you have Indiana, you know. Trace Jackson Davis came back and he's been on a tear along with Tamar Bates, you know. Him assisting. This, 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 I mean, the Hoosiers are looking like the Hoosiers of old. You know, a team that can actually, you know, be confident placing good basketball. And then you also have Hunter Dickinson, Juwan's son, Jet, Jet Howard, and the Wolverines going up against... Again, a Virginia team that is playing a whole different brand of basketball. Jaden Gardner, Reese Beekman, you know, definitely two guys you need to watch out for for the Cavs. Again, there's also another challenge, but again, I don't really particularly care about challenges all that much. Like the Big 12 Big East challenges, you know, it, it's happening. You know, you also have like Marquette Baylor. But the real focus should be on Creighton, Texas. Oh my goodness. This one is going to be good. Definitely like a top 10 wordy matchup, I think. Maybe top 15, depending. You know, I don't think Creighton will fall very far in the top 25. You know, if you have Marcus Carr, Timmy Allen, Tyrese Hunter. Let me tell you, again, this is a Texas team that is just, you know, different this year. Again, the Big 12 is already built different. You know, said this for years now. Big 12 is built different. And then for Creighton, you got to watch out for the Ryans. Again, Cock Runner, Ryan Nemhard. Again, a lot of people have picking Creighton to be the class of the Big East this year. And, I mean, this this one's going to be good. It's going to be a good one. Um, the Virginia-Michigan game is, uh, what, Tuesday night, North Carolina, Indiana, Wednesday night, Creighton, Texas, Thursday night. And then, unfortunately, Gonzaga and Baylor is on Peacock. I know. It's on Peacock. You know, so... I, I'm definitely going to be watching highlights of this game because I'm not getting Peacock. I'm not even going to waste my time with Peacock, you know. I mean, we all know Baylor is loaded again. They brought pretty much everybody back. LJ Cryer, Adam Flagler, Flo Fampa, whole team is back. Pretty much for Baylor and Gonzaga, the jury's still out on them, but they're navigating, you know, one of the most brutal stretches I think I've seen in quite some time from them. Like, like few. I gotta give few props for building a non-conference schedule that just looks that damn good. It's 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 really good, you know, because again, yeah, there's just so many good teams this year. And then again, there's also some teams that just can't seem to play basketball, but, you know, like Florida State and Louisville, Syracuse, Georgetown, those teams could not play basketball this year. And then Kentucky, you know, Kentucky kind of went under the radar this week because they didn't do anything this week, but they're also going to get a chance in London against Michigan, um, Jacob Toppin, Oscar Shibway. Again, they're ready to give the UK a show against Michigan. We'll see if Kentucky can mount that because again they got they got dominated by Gonzaga a week or two ago. They got a, they got dominated thoroughly, or rather just a week ago, not not two weeks ago, a week ago. So we'll see what they can do. You know, two weeks removed from that beating they got because that's a Sunday game. I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to watch that. You know, with the NFL being on, and I need to, I need I need college basketball to stop doing this. You know, early in the season. I really, we just need college basketball to start. You know, during Thanksgiving weekend. But you know, you didn't you didn't hear me say that. 
Okay, so what do y'all think? What do y'all think? You know about this week? Y'all think? Y'all think when we're getting a good week this week? Because again, we got we got matchups all over the place. Again, I know Ohio State Duke is another one, but I'm not sold on Ohio State right now, and I'm not sold on Duke either, especially after the way they got you know dominated like that. You know, we'll see. We'll see because conference play is heating up already. Because some conferences are starting conference play. You know, this week because it's going to be the, you know, last few days of November, first few days of December, so conferences are going to start some of their conference games, you know, in the next week or so, and it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how everything goes, so, until, I don't know, later, which would be like, I don't know, like 10 o'clock tonight, I'll be back with the NFL, um, Y'all take care, and I might have something in the community poll up um, for college basketball, but I, although we'll see because we're still in football season right now. We're still in peak football form, so really, you know, my thoughts right now on where things are, again, I, I just think there's so many good teams right now in college basketball, just so many. Like, you could legitimately say, hey, hey, hey this, this, this team right here deserves to be number one. And I know Houston struggled too, you know, because they're number one right now. But honestly, you know, again, it's just like it's it's it, it's the pageantry, you know, the, the the beauty of it, you know, the the finger pointing. That's what I was trying to get at. The finger pointing is really what it is right now, because we don't know. We'll find out soon, but we don't know right now. Until then, I'll see you later.